Hi, my name is Samantha and I work at the McGirt Horton branch of the Greensboro Public Library. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the basics of oral history so that you can get started making your very own oral history interviews. Thank you for watching. So what is oral history? Oral history is essentially letting someone talk about the past in their own words. An oral history is an interview with someone. It can be a loved one, a well-known person in the community, a celebrity, whoever you choose. And it gives them the opportunity to tell and preserve their story. These are some examples of oral history that the Greensboro Public Library owns. A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James is a fictionalized oral history where voices from the North Carolina mountains and Mexican voices slash American dreams are actual examples of nonfiction oral history. If you need some inspiration for oral history interviews, I recommend checking out African American Lives. Because oral histories allow people to tell their own stories, they can help provide unique perspectives on the past. Unless the interviewee is already famous, it is unlikely that their stories and experiences have ever been told before in their own words. This makes oral histories a great way to, quote, fill in gaps of the historical record. Oral history is an excellent way to learn more about your family history or the history of your local community. And besides the educational and historical aspects, oral history also allows you to spend time with a loved one or someone who you admire and hear their stories and learn from them. It's a great bonding experience and oral history interviews can become excellent family heirlooms or keepsakes. So the first step is to find someone who's willing to talk about their experience on record. This person can be a local celebrity or your grandmother. That's totally up to you. Next, you'll need to get your equipment ready. There's lots of fancy ways that you can record people, but all you really need is just a way to record art audio, which most smartphones and computers have built in. Next, you're going to want to be able to record audio and take notes if possible. Taking notes is a great way to keep yourself organized and remember specific moments that you want to highlight. You always want to start each recording with the time, date, and name of the interviewee. This will help keep your audio files organized. <clears throat> Remember to be patient and flexible with the person you're interviewing. You might be asking them personal or difficult questions, so give them time to process the question and to prepare an answer. It's also a great idea to bring along items that might trigger their memories, like photo albums or scrapbooks. Finally, remember to have fun. It's a good idea to do some background research on the person that you're interviewing. It doesn't need to be super involved, but you should have a basic idea of who they are, where they lived, and important moments and experiences in their life. This is necessary so that you can create an outline of interview questions that will help you keep yourself organized during the interview. You also want to test your audio equipment to make sure that it is recording before you start your interview. Also remember to bring extra batteries or charging cables if necessary. And finally, finding a safe and quiet space in which to conduct your interview is really important so that there isn't a ton of background noise and so that the person you're interviewing feels able to comfortably answer your questions. As far as interviewing tips goes, the most important one is to not interrupt. Um, just let the person talk. You can lead them back towards your original question if you need to. You also want to not just follow your list of questions. Let the interviewee kind of take the lead and you follow them where the conversation naturally leads. Taking breaks is important because interviewing someone and answering questions can be tiring. Be open and non-judgmental to answers you might receive. You might hear things that you don't agree with or that you know are incorrect, but it's your job to let the interviewee tell their story. Remember to ask open-ended questions, not yes or no questions. This is an interview, not a survey. These are some example oral history interview questions. 
and many more can be found at the UCLA Center for Oral History Research. Remember, it's most important to ask open-ended, non-leading questions and remain open to hearing whatever it is that your interviewee has to say. These are some additional resources on how to conduct oral history interviews and genealogical research. They are all available through the Greensboro Public Library.